When working with Track Transform on audio tracks, we are rendering down the audio that we have in this instance here. I've got a little loop. We're render, rendering that down along with any other insert effects uh, we may have added to the track as well as any automation. And this can be useful for freeing up CPU usage since after we transform the track, any effects will be removed since they are being rendered down with our newly created audio file. It can also be used in a situation where we've applied the effects or automation to our audio file and we just like to commit or print these effects to the audio file and say use the newly rendered audio in a sample or, or other device. Now, as I mentioned here, I've got a basic loop that I've applied three different effects to. We can see that those are here within the track inspector. I've got an auto filter, analog delay, and room reverb. They are powered off actually at the moment because we're just gonna take a listen to the uh, loop as it is unprocessed really quickly. Okay, I'll come back to the beginning of the track and then I'm gonna just click on the global power for the inserts and activate all of those so we can then hear them processed. So if we'd like to print these effects onto our loop and get rid of the insert effects that we have over here, the three in our inspector, which are using CPU power, we could simply right click on the track here. And then down towards the center area, we have transform to rendered audio. I'll click once on that. And then we have a dialogue here and a couple of different options. So first we have preserve real time state and this there's actually a description here below. So when we have this activated, we'll at any time be able to go back and transform the audio track back to its original state that it's in now with just our original audio loop and the three insert effects applied to it. So even at, when we are transforming, these will be removed, but as long as we have this preserve real-time state checked, then we can always go back to its original state. Now below that we have auto tail and by default, it's going to be deselected and you can put in a fixed tail amount, a time here in seconds. You can also just click that to uh, have Studio One do an auto tail. And what this is, is if I go ahead and deselect and cancel out of here, I'm gonna play back. I'm gonna take the loop off by pressing the forward slash on my keyboard. And let's just listen to the audio because I do have analog delay and reverb. So that's gonna kind of trail off here at the end. So you can hear those effects being played even after our loop is finished here at the beginning of bar six. So this is where the tail comes into play. And again, we can let Studio One do an auto tail or we can put in a specified amount of time here, whatever we think will work best. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click again, come down to the center, transform to rendered audio. We know what's going on here. I'm going to put in a time of, I think five will be fine actually. So we'll just leave that and then I'm gonna click okay. Now we can see our track has been transformed. It is still named the same name, but our insert effects are gone and we do have this five second tail uh, with a fade out that has been added. And of course we can adjust that if we'd like. I'll go ahead and just play back. Okay, so we can hear clearly how that works. Now, if we'd like to go back to as it was, because we did leave that uh, checkbox checked, we can go to transform to real-time audio. And now we can see we're back to our original state with the three insert effects. And this is actually expanded out because initially I had cut this loop there. So it's just transforming it back to how the original, the length of the original audio loop is why that added that on. So I'm going to go ahead and mute this audio track and let's move on to our instrument track here, which I have an impact on. And I've got a really basic beat here just to show as an example. And when we transform instrument tracks, we have a few more things to keep in mind or to take into consideration. 
Now we do begin the process exactly the same by right clicking on the track here and then coming up to the transform to audio track. I'll go ahead and click on that. But then you can see at the very top here we have render all channels. Now if you're using something like uh, Presence or my tie, you're only going to have two channels, a stereo out. So this is kind of irrelevant. But when we're working with an instrument like Impact or Contact, something that may have multiple outs. So if I go ahead and F3 and open up the console, we can see that for our Impact, we actually have three channels here. So if I go ahead and play this back, we can see our bass drum, snare, and hats all on three different channels and they're being routed to a bus here. And I've directed them towards this bus to, to also tell you that once we transform the track, it, it will create three individual new tracks, but it will keep your routings. So if you do have your drums routed to a bus, once we transform the track, they'll still be sent to this drum bus. So I'm gonna go ahead and F3 to close out the console and let's right click and come back to our transform to audio track. Now, if we were to deselect this, then it's going to transform or render down only the track that you have selected. Next below that, we have render inserts. So if I had any compressors or delays on the individual channels, then it's going to render those inserts down with the audio as we just saw with our loop. We have preserve instrument track state, and we've seen that as well in our previous example. That just means we're gonna be able to go back to the original state where our original MIDI instrument track will be brought back and any inserts that are on that track. We then have remove instrument if we'd like to uh, basically remove the instrument after the transform process has been completed to save on CPU. And again, we have the auto tail as we saw up above here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay so we can take a look at this. Now you can see it's processing each of those three or more than that because we actually do, if I F3 and come back here, the impact does have other channels that are active. They were just hidden. So if I, what this means is that I'm gonna F3 here and then just come back up and transform to instrument track. We can see, we can do that and come back just as we were. But I wanted to make the point that if I open up the impact, then we can click on this arrow here and see that the reason why we had all of those ones rendered down more than the three that we heard is because we have multiple ones that are activated here. If I go ahead and deselect these, close this out, let's right click, transform the audio track, Okay. Now we have the three that actually have the audio on it. And you can see here we have waveforms to display the uh, audio data as well as the original MIDI data below that. And this is gonna give you a visual indication of the tracks that you have performed a uh, transformation on. So that if I come back to the beginning of our loop here and just play back, I'll F3 and open up the console. And we can see that, as I mentioned, these are still being routed to the bus that I created. So our routings will be kept. Now I'm gonna go ahead and right click to transform back to our instrument track. And just the last couple of things that I wanna make note of is that we can, if I press T and add an audio track, I'll just call this drums. We do have a quick convert available. So if I were to take this MIDI part and just drag it to that audio track, it's gonna render that down. It's gonna be all in one audio file, but, but we do have that available. Say if you had a melody part and you, that's not an issue for you to combine, to uh, render it as one audio track. I'm gonna go ahead and control Z. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is just that you can transform multiple audio or instrument tracks at a time, which can save you a lot of time. So just know that that is possible as well.
and that is working with the transform tracks within Studio One. Thanks for watching.